Stop the cap. These comments are horrible. I'm over here underneath the Adam Taggart video. <laughs> and I love what, what one guy wrote in the comment section, which sums up the video, which I kind of already, I already anticipated basically saying they said a whole bunch of nothing. They didn't come up with any real tangible solutions. It was just them, you know, what did he, what did he say? Obfuscating, um, which, which is what they do. I've, I've, I don't know who this dude is that looks like a pastor, <laughs> Uh, the, the, one of the white guys up there, he's kind of got like a, I don't know, like a snobby British accent. I don't know who he is. Um, but you know, they're, they're talking about the issue, but it's like they, there's a complete another disconnect. And, you know, they're talking about Scott Galloway and, you know, him giving these speeches and Ted talks and he was on the, what was that? Was it the Washington Post? What was that that he was on? I forget what it was. Let me see if I can pull it up. Actually, no, I can't pull it up. What's the WSJ? The Washington something journal? What is it? I don't know what it is. Anyway. Um, Scott kind of comes off to me as a plant. You know, he's kind of like a release valve. Um, he started bringing up this stuff about Israel and Israel was defending itself. And, um, you know, I didn't know he was Jewish, uh, but, uh, you know, he started bringing up stuff about, you know, trying to compare it to Japan when Japan attacked America. And I'm like, Japan was an imperial power. They had a military and everything else like that. And I'm like, Palestine, it's already been stated. You took the land you know, Lord Balford, freaking Arthur Rothschild, uh, the promise made to the Palestinians if they help fight the Ottomans to get them out of there, you know, and then, you know, the, the, the illegal immigration of Ashkenazis, you know, to the land of Palestine. Then you have the whole uh, freaking King David Hotel bombing. You have the uh, Goldsmiths Club bombing uh, in Haifa in 1947. You have the uh, police station bombing in 1947 in Jaffa. You have the Sergeant's Affair, which was where uh, basically two, um, two British military police officers were deleted and then their bodies were booby-trapped. I mean, like I said before in my other video, um, the Israelis were racking up bodies, you know, like it was a damn video game. Uh, all you have to do is just do a quick Google search of Haganah, Ergun, and Lehi, which is AKA Stern Gang. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. And the conversation is over. That's all you have to do. And then followed, you know, that was the Yom Kippur War and all that other stuff. And, and you know, he was trying to bring up you know, the student protesters and what the student protesters are doing and, and, oh, it's because of TikTok and how dangerous TikTok is. And I'm like, why? Because people are showing the alternative on TikTok. They're showing the truth on TikTok, right? The global South is on TikTok. You know, it's like people know, like we are dealing with the most informed generation that there is. Now, I agree with him on the fact that I think a lot of you know, the young people, that you see protesting, like I saw interviews of people that were speaking and they didn't even know like what, like what was going on. Like they don't know the details of it. They haven't done, you know, the homework, but there's a whole, you know, other part of the internet out there that knows what the deal is. But, you know, obviously they'll never put the camera in front of those people who can actually articulate themselves. No, the goal is to make, you know, anybody speaking on the issue, you know, sound and look like an idiot. You know, so it's like, you know, it's like they're all like with just with black people, whenever they go and, you know, something happens, they'll go and they'll get, you know, Antoine, hide your kids, or hide your wife, because that's entertaining or go get sweet Betty Brown, you know, freaking, you know, Lord Jesus, there's a fire. Right. 
but they're not going to get the black guy, you know, with the with, that looks like he reads, that looks intelligent, looking like, you know, Tommy from the Martin Lawrence show. They're not going to go. The news anchors aren't going to go run over to him. No, they're going to go and they're going to get the person that looks like they're a dumbass and be like, oh, what happened here? And, and that's and that's what they do. But in any event, yeah, I was kind of irritated listening to Scott Gallo. Like he, it's like it was like that was kind of like a plug. And so it was like he kind of went up there to, you know, address the the the, the Israeli Palestine issue. At the same time, he's acting as a release valve, you know, for young people that are frustrated. And then he panders to, you know, the the older crowd by, you know, always trying to throw up all this like personal responsibility and hard work, like what he did with Whoopi Goldberg on The View. Right. And he do, and he goes into these dumb, childish uh, routines where he's talking about, you know, you know, what young men need to do is they need to get up in the morning and brush their teeth and make their bed. And, you know, that Jordan Peterson bullshit like I, like these people just need to not be running the world. They've already fucked it up enough. You know, like they they again, at the end of the day, you know, they do not want to pay people. OK, employees are an expense. Now, what Scott Galloway is saying about how the older generation has hoarded all the wealth, you know, all the stuff that black people have been saying. I got to remind you, white people, black people have been pointing it out. And we got hit with the same lines that you're getting hit with now. Oh, they're lazy. Oh, black people breathing up all the white man's air. You know, y'all didn't listen to us when we tried to tell you. Stokely Carmichael tried to tell you back in the day. You didn't want to listen to him about how uh, 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 exploitative capitalism uh, uh, is, you know, and uh, just how bad it can get. You know, as I've stated before. You know, what the boomers, you know, experienced, you know, they experienced a post-World War II booming economy because America had a manufacturing base and, you know, the rest of the world needed to be rebuilt and they had to purchase everything from America. And slowly over time, you know, uh, there was, you know, deindustrialization, the destruction of unions, the destruction of pensions. Um, you know, the, the, you know, things like NAFTA, right. Um, and just ways to cut costs, right. Cater to the shareholders. I mean, even the, the shit that they do when, you know, they're like, oh, let's fire, you know, 1400 people, let's fire, you know, 10,000 people, let's fire, you know, and then, and then, oh, and then look at our, you know, fourth quarter profits. Like that's not profits. You fired, you, you basically just took care, took all your employees off the books. That's literally what you did. You didn't turn a profit, you know, so like the American economy just starts looking like this big, like Las Vegas style casino slot machine where the people who can invest, you know, they're just over there trying with these get get rich quick schemes. Right. Because that's what the whole thing with the, uh, you know, the tech industry and and companies making it look like they were growing and hiring people oh we're growing look we hire 300 people oh we're growing and throw us more investment money because we might be the next uber or the next amazon or the next google or whatever and you know they engaged in in that you know gambling um and you know it's like i i don't know what happened but between the 2009 crisis and like now you know, in conjunction with COVID, where it was like, I don't know, it's like the lid just popped off everything. And I personally, I think it's just the culmination of all these manipulative market tactics that have just like ruined everything. And and this is what has made me like, I feel like I have to reevaluate white supremacy. Like I know there's white supremacy and then there's classism. Right. And I try to explain to white people that when they're like, oh, make America great again, Donald Trump and all that, I'm like, Donald Trump is in that elite category. He doesn't give a fuck about you. Dave Chappelle tried to say the same thing. White people, you know, they, they think it's a us versus them, you know, sort of situation. And, and what's crazy is th what the white elites are doing totally undermines your everyday white working class person. It completely undermines them. 
You know, like, like I see all this stuff bitching about, oh, the white birth rates, they're on the floor. Oh, white people aren't having babies. I'm like, of course they're not. And especially when you throw on that whole conservative rhetoric, right? It be, you need to be personally responsible, right? And to be personally responsible means if you're broke, you what? You don't have kids, right? That's what they tell black people who have too many damn kids. We got a completely fucked up kids to resource ratio due to all the historical events, redlining, blockbusting, Jim Crow, eminent domain, urban renewal, comic leasing, debt peonage, cointel pro, right? The purging of black communities, running highways through black communities, right? 1955 Highway Commission Act, all these things that keep undermining the black community, right? So we got all these problems. So now the white community, the regular middle-class white community is now slipping into the depths of the black community in terms of the same situations and circumstance, right? Because they have no money and they have no wealth. They got a little bit, they got more than black people got to like, you know, like, like to hold them over, but like, you know, the, the savings are depleting. You know, but it's crazy to me. I mean, I, I mean, I'm I'm looking at them like it's amazing to me watching white people, right? That previously I'm like, yeah, white people, white supremacy. They're trying to maintain white supremacy, but capitalism doesn't allow them to maintain anything. You know, like white supremacy is supposed to be a a, a situation that like continues in perpetuity, right? You 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 know the white person that is generation one, they get to a certain age, they pass the torch, they teach all their children all the white supremacist angles, right? Pass the wealth on to that group, right? And the opportunities on to that group, and then that group maintains it for the subsequent generations, right? At least in my mind, that's how I think white supremacy is supposed to work. Right. But that's not what's going on. Right. What's going on is is a, a classist system. It's 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 freaking, you know, uh, Snowpiercer. It's uh, the purge. It's uh, Elysium with Matt Damon, you know, where all the rich people live up in the in the ring in the fucking, in, you know, the in the damn orbital station and whatnot. Right. Like that's literally, you know, what it is. And and white people are like, they're just starting to get it. But it doesn't mean they're getting ready to go off and form Voltron with black people. Like, they're not going to do that. You know, I see the stuff with the white people fleeing white countries. They're fleeing the UK. They're fleeing America. You know, and, and I mean, I don't blame the Mexicans. Like, the Mexicans, like... I look at the Mexicans like, nah, nah, you like we can't come over there. We can't come to America. Y'all act y'all talk dirty about us. You act like we ain't shit. You know, you, you gotta, you know, Trump talking about, oh, you know, they up there, uh uh they're all criminals, whatnot. Then the economy gets bad in America, and then they want to flee back down there. Reminds me of that movie. What was that? What was that? A day after tomorrow? What was the movie where at the end of the movie, like it was a global catastrophe? The whole earth like froze over like at least the top half, and then all the North American uh, uh, people and, and like basically North America and Europe had to move to the southern hemisphere in order to like live and survive because they had like the the super what was it the super like tornado cold air that was coming down out of the atmosphere what movie was that was that the day after tomorrow you know but it was but i always thought the ending of that movie was interesting because it's like you know america and americans are like oh we don't want those latinos coming down here even though we've with our cia completely disrupted their economies and their leaderships and their socialist governments and whatnot i mean literally go watch the johnny harris video about the cia's intervention and and the banana republic right in guatemala read up on all of that okay and and at the end of the movie here you got all these people getting off the plane and shit and going in in, in, in in Latin America where the climate is still somewhat normal, but the whole, you know, top of the, you know, North America is all underneath glacier, right? And it's kind of the same thing when I see these people, they're, they're trying to escape, you know, some of the white people that got money, they're trying to escape, they're going down to Mexico, they're like, well, I'm not paying these, I'm not paying this money, 
you know, two thousand dollars worth of rent, bump that. Well, I'll just take my American dollars and go down to Mexico and then mess up their economy, right? Because obviously the Mexican merchants down there, they see people with American dollars, they start raising prices, then the locals can't afford it, right? And so they, you know, the president of Mexico, he's talking about kicking them people back out and making them go back to America. Like, no, 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 no. No, we're gonna treat you like you treat us. And personally, I think that's the appropriate response. I think it's, you know, you you reap what you sow, right? But um, it's always just, it like like all of the tactics, you know, the, I see people talking about religion, you know, and, and you know what I think of religion. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. I think what it does is it's trying to get people to act and behave in a specific way that is beneficial to the power structure without them having to offer anything. And and they keep thinking like and it's amazing because because we talked about this. You know, we talk about this in the black community. Why black men don't go to church because there's no economic opportunities in the church at one point in time. A black man in 1960 could go to the church and he could meet Mr. Johnson and Mr. Johnson worked in the Ford plant and Mr. Johnson could do a referral and get his get a young man in the Ford plant. So he would go to church just to get, you know, the hookup and then he might stay there. You know, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Yeah, because he's making money now. He can do things. He can make moves. Right. But but now, you know, young men can't make moves because. We have this system where nobody wants to pay, right? And it's worse than just nobody wants to pay. I mean, it's it's nobody wants to pay. It's 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 the ghost jobs. I see a lot of people talking about the ghost jobs. You know that you know you you fill out your resume and it just goes into the void. There needs to be a law against that. You know, millennials and zillennials need to need to. I mean, I mean, it's going to take a serious level of organization from millennials and zillennials when it comes to this. All this left, right, blue, red shit that has to go out of the door because because it's not it's not red versus blue for young people. You know what it is? Old versus young. That's what it is. It's old versus young. And so when you go to the booth, you literally have to vote these old people out or just sit there and wait for them to die another, a whole nother decade or so. Because all the people in Congress, you know, the, I think the, the average age is like 67. The 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 average age of uh, the life expectancy is 76. So like that's another decade that they're still going to be around a lot of the people that are in there. You see, so so, you know, if you want something to change. In a reasonable amount of time within your lifetime, you're going to have to get these old farts the fuck out of there. OK, because uh, first off, they're completely bought out. Right. Whether it's APAC or whether it's the military industrial complex, Grunham, uh, Northrop Grumman, you know, freaking uh, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon. Right. They're all bought out. You know, they don't they, your vote doesn't mean anything. It's all about the money. It's all about the almighty dollar and the old people have the almighty dollar. Right. You know, the, the, I mean, seriously speaking, when is the last time you made a financial donation or contribution to any of these damn politicians? Let's be honest. We haven't. We haven't. We don't we don't put our money where our mouth is when it comes to hell. The whole argument here is the fact that many young people don't have any damn money. You know, but it, I, I'm more blown away at like it's like what Bill Burr said. It's it, it's not the it's not. What do you say? You know, it's 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 the audacity of you to be surprised. And And I'm saying white people. They're so like the old white people are so used to throwing up, you know, the the talking points that they throw at black people, my bootstraps, personal responsibility, my hard work. Right. They're so used to just that they, they, they think that's like the the be all end all whenever they whatever you bring up the, the, the like and sh the, the, the point that the math ain't mathin', Right. The math ain't mathin'. Whether it's student loans, whether it's the cost of rent, whether it's the, the high interest rates, inflation, the fact that young people can't afford homes. I mean, I'm blown away when when I hear all this stuff about all oh, the birth rates. Oh, you know, like and it's just it's 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 shit that has nothing to do with what the real problem is. The real problem is employers don't want to pay. They don't want to fucking pay. 
for 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 Jordan Peterson or Scott Galloway to sit up there and talk about get up in the morning and brush your teeth and 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 and, and uh, uh go work out and do things like they 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 want to focus on like the lowest of the low like the guy that's just like sitting around just being a lush that's not the problem no the problem is the the men that are the, the majority of the men are the men that have disengaged from society you know it's like it's like like even when you hear things, oh, men need to go to bars and interact with women and date. With what with what money? With what money are you again? Like like it's like they say shit. They say shit that is literally it at like they literally can't be done because the root of the problem has not been addressed, right? They want to talk about men dating women and starting families and all. I'm like, uh, with what money? You haven't made men economically viable to actually. First off, the whole point of dating and courtship is to lead to a relationship, which leads to marriage, which leads to the production of children, which leads to family. All of that fucking cost money. Even even on even just dating cost money right because regardless of how strong and independent and feminist women are they still want to date hypergamously they still want to date up you know which again you know the social experiment of feminism in my opinion you know has failed because any woman making six figures you know she's got to date a guy that makes three times that much in order to for him to be economically i just i i don't i don't I don't see the point because it doesn't it doesn't acknowledge female nature and female nature pretty much dictates how the society is supposed to is supposed to run. Why do I say that? Because obviously we're not talking about grape, right? Obviously we're not talking about that. So so what is so what does that mean? That means that whatever the standards are for women, whatever lifestyle, whatever they expect, right, is pretty much what dictates the growth of your society for the collective of your society, right? So so America has had like this minimum of what 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 used to be the American dream. Women still expect that. So if a man is going to court and he's going to date, he at least has to have the trajectory of being able to purchase a home, have a nest, right? So that, you know, the woman can lay her eggs and raise the babies, right? If you don't have that, then your birth rates are nowhere. Your birth rates are nowhere, which, I mean, obviously we've already talked about this. This is going to cause a problem later down the road because then you end up with that inverted population triangle where there's a whole bunch of old people and there's no young people to tax there's no young people to then take those taxes and you know build infrastructure and maintain the infrastructure the already existing infrastructure um uh what else is there uh uh and even to take care of the old people right this is the problem that japan has this is the problem that korea has and now the west you know has that problem and all of it is tied back to employers don't want to pay. Oh, no. The free markets. It's free markets is bullshit. It's bullshit. Because the thing, the crazy thing is, it's like, first off, it all comes full circle. Like, watching these companies cry and complain, like Home Depot, you know, about, you know, how, um, you know, they're blaming, you know, high interest rates and all that. Just like, not just that. I'm like, no, they don't want to pay people. Home Depot is is where people get the products for what new homes and home improvement if young people can't afford homes or there's no homes being built right then that means that nobody's going to be coming into home depot right and the same thing applies to every other industry like across the board right you know um you know people are not going to spend money that they don't have and i was trying to find a video somebody was somebody was telling me about uh I don't know whether it was Cap or somebody in my comment section. They were talking about the Great Depression and how, you know, and, and I know because my, my great grandmother was, you know, she was she was one of them. Um, you know, she used to have that a sock with like, I mean, you think she was a drug dealer. It was racks on racks on racks rolled up like she would have hundreds in that bitch rolled up in a sock, a white sock. And then she was stuffing in her breast because, again, 
What happened? The institutions, the banks failed in 1929 and a lot of people lost their money. I don't I didn't think they had the FDIC, which guarantees up to, I think, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. They didn't have that before. Right. Even though I think they changed the rule recently with that bank collapse out there in California with the tech industry and whatnot. They guaranteed everybody's you know, money and whatnot, because, you know, institutions failing like that. Once people lose trust in the institutions, you know, as a government. As a society, you're pretty much done. And so, you know, the, the Great Depression had a profound effect on, you know, the silent generation. Had a profound effect. Well, actually, would she be a part of the silent generation? Maybe, yeah, I think she was a part of the silent generation. Anyway, it would have a profound effect on that, right? Because, because... People get used to poverty. They get used to going. It's just like the whole thing. I was watching some video on YouTube about the UK and the pubs or, you know, they've closed like, I don't know, a majority of their pubs and the pubs aren't coming back because people aren't going to the bar anymore. Well, the people that were prime age that would have went to the pubs, right? All that got disrupted by COVID, right? They didn't get to enjoy that natural transition between, you know, high school and college and being able to go to the bars and stuff like that. All that stuff was closed down. So what happened? Everybody got used to being inside. Everybody got used to, you know, going on Omegly and 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 and, and you know, sliding in DMs and every their whole world and interaction being on social media. Right? So they didn't feel the need to go to the bars and whatnot. On top of the fact, again, that the economy, you know, freaking craps out. So so then you're like, OK, I'm going to the bar and then inflation hits. And it's like, OK, let me get a beer. And they're like, oh, here's a beer for eleven dollars. The fuck? Eleven dollars for a beer? You know, New York prices are even crazier. But I'm just saying, like, you start looking at it like, well, why am I doing this? Then you have the 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 whole issue with the gender war. Right. Where, uh, you know, freaking men are like, OK, you know, th thanks to social media, women's nature has basically been exposed. They only want the top 10, 20 percent of dudes. So if you don't if you're not in the top 10, 20 percent of dudes in terms of fame, game, money or looks, why bother? Why bother? Right. Because literally from the freaking chicks that are freaking fours all the way up to the tens, they're only focused on a narrow population of men. So men are like, why am I going to go to the bar and waste my money? Right. Right. O on top of, you know, the economy, you know, being shit. This rolls right into the whole thing with single mothers. You know, like people are, why is everybody picking on single mothers? Because single mothers at this point have become 100 percent liabilities. 100% liabilities. You know, even even though men generally speaking don't like single mothers because, you know, if you're a childless guy, you know, taking care of somebody else's seed is, you know, you're getting cucked. Basically, you're getting cucked. The other dude is basically the cow bird or the cuckoo bird and you're getting cucked, you know? And and so you end up with the, you know, situation where, you know, in the past, or not just they end up with a situation, but in the past, you know, men were working, men were gainfully employed, you know, you know, they could afford taking on a single mom if they really liked the woman and they chose to be with her and made a connection and a bond with the child, not a big deal. And the other guy, the stepdaddy, not, not the stepdaddy, the biological father, he was likely working. So you weren't taking on the full load. Right. It would be, you know, maybe you even knew the guy. Maybe, you know, he divorced his wife and you met her wife, his wife, some his ex-wife somewhere else. He worked in the same factory you worked in. You know, what I mean, so it wasn't like those kids were 100 percent, you know, a charity case. Right. But now it's like and then again, the feminism, women's sexual liberation, all that shit, you know, women going out and having babies all willy nilly. Um you know, I don't need I don't need to be married. I don't need a man. All this other crap. Like it's just 100 percent liability. And and again, if money is already tight, why would I want to invest my money into your child that you had with somebody else? Right. So, you know, all of this 
it just it just begins to like just play off of one another. But I think, you know, the the the, the main thing is the lack of economic viability of young men. You know, if they can't make certain moves, if, you know, oh, you need to work and you need to do this. If that work doesn't equate to them actually having anything, then fuck, fuck your work. Fuck your work. Fuck your society. Fuck your rules. Fuck your standards. Fuck your religion. You know, fuck your concepts. Nobody cares at this point because the social contract has been broken. I've said this. I've warned about this. When you create a society... There is a social contract. There is an agreement. It's the same as marriage. Once you screw, start screwing with things and you start taking away the goodies, right, which is the respect, the recognition and the reward, the financial reward, when you remove it and then there's nothing left. And then you think you're going to stand there with your hands on your hip and talk about Jesus and talk about, you know, a hard work and personal responsibility and my bootstraps. Eventually, they're going to tell you to go fuck yourself. That's what's going to happen. So, you know, it's it, it just like I'm, I'm waiting for like majority of white men to get there. They're coming. They're coming. I'm reading these comment sections. I mean, these these comments are horrible i mean these are horrible comments i mean just where's this at let me look the first comment i mean just lays it out it just lays it out where's the where's the first comment the first comment where's where's the comment that i just had hold on hold on hold on people yeah here it is here's a comment people are tired of people are tired of subsidizing boomers social security i worked full-time with side hustles for over a decade, thinking I was I was gonna eventually make it. Some years I never I never used uh, company paid time off. I showed up on time, uh, was a team player, and did everything I was supposed to do. One day I woke, I should say one day I woke up at age 30 and realized that I put in all that work and I had nothing to show for it. No wife. No kids, no home, no nothing. But boomers will blame me and say that uh, need to stop complaining and work harder. Let me see this. This is, yep, it's a white guy. It's a white guy saying this shit. I mean, these comments are horrible. Horrible. You know, usually, you know, the, and see the, the, see, the tone has changed. Because, see, when white men... You know, where you know, when they felt like they had hope and they were good, you know, they would wag their fingers at black people, you know, primarily black people. They would wag their fingers. Oh, y'all, y'all niggas is lazy. Y'all just don't want to work. Da, 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 da. And I told you, see, the, the number one thing a society cannot do is make see like everything that he said. You know, I followed the rules. I did this. I did that. Right. You have to reward that. It's not just a concept. And this is the part that, that the people, the powers that be, this is the part that they miss. That has to be rewarded, as Amos Wilson said. It has to be reinforced. If you have too many of the people that do exactly what you said they should do fail, and, and you have them looking like assholes, and they have nothing to show for it, and then you got the drug dealer or the criminal... Right. Because I remember growing up and I used to see the cartoons and they used to say crime, crime never pays. Well, right now it's looking like crime is paying way more than what, uh, um, you know, what, uh, you know, following the rules is paying. Because because before it was following the rules. Yeah, the money wasn't as fast, but slow and steady, you know, you know, wins the race type of thing. Right. Where you were where there were certain things that. We're not necessarily not necessarily guaranteed, but extremely likely like you would have to really fuck up and deviate in order for it not to happen. And now it's like none of that's on the table. So now you got following the rules, uh, doing the right thing equals zero. It equals nothing. It doesn't equal a house. It doesn't equal a decent car. It doesn't equal a girlfriend. It doesn't equal a, a retirement. It doesn't equal being able to take it. It equals nothing. Nothing. Nobody is going to be loyal to that. 
you are going to start seeing some really unpatriotic things happening very soon. Either that or you're going to see uh, boomers heads on sticks. Because in my opinion, based on these comments alone, oh, yeah, y'all got a revolution coming real quick. I see why you want to pass the uh, gas operated uh, uh, semi-automatic rifle ban. I see why you want to pass that shit. Because you have no goddamn intention of fixing this shit. Because at the end of the day, that would require a transfer of wealth from the oldest generations back down to the youngest generations so that they can actually, you know, get the ball rolling on getting their life started. And they don't want to do that. They don't want to do that. So either you're going to see revolution or you're going to see people abandoning ship, leaving, going to other countries, which if you're on social media, you've already seen that. People are already making videos. My life in Spain. My life in Budapest. My life in Ecuador. My life in Colombia. My life in Mexico, right? My life in, in, in Puerto Rico or whatever. They, they're going elsewhere. My life in Bali. My life in Thailand. My life in Cambodia. You're starting to see that. My life in Japan. I mean, this is how badly white oligarchic boomers have fucked it up. I've been saying this. I said they fucked it up. They took all the ingredients out of the recipe. So now it tastes like shit. And 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 they're still trying to, you know, just they're still trying to be up there talking about uh, you know, oh, you know, personal responsibility, hard work. They're still trying to come with the Fox News, you know, type of talking point. Again, I go back, I look at that video from the Myers, you know, the Myers, you know, for Levittown, the first black family that moved into Levittown, Pennsylvania, right? John Levitt was a racist. This is 1947 when Levittown was built and the black family moved in and the white people didn't want them there. The, those people in that, in those videos are like 24 years old and, and, and have those homes. The average age in 1960 to purchase a home was 24 years old. The average age in, in, um, in, was it 2023 or 2022 was 36 years old. You done fucked up. Marriage has already gone backwards. You know, people delaying, people are not getting married until they're, you know, the, the, they're in their thirties or the woman's in her late twenties, right? Women, I saw some stat, they were talking about women's uh, the age for marriage has gone back 2.5 years. Yeah, because it's taking young men longer and longer to get their shit together. And I mean, it's societally destabilizing. Having a bunch of young, disaffected uh, men uh, that are broke, unemployed, underemployed in a society that has 330 million guns is not a smart thing to, you know, to, to just let fester. But again, you can't tell these white boomers shit. They're so goddamn disconnected to this shit. It's retarded. They re they really think that these white boys won't tear the motherfucking street up. They will tear this bitch up. They will be out there with fucking plate carriers tearing this bitch up like uh freaking in Virginia when they tried to pass the assault weapons ban. Y'all remember when they were out there storming the Capitol? All them three percenters and oath keepers and all the other people on top of the fact that you done had fucking 20 years of freaking war in Iraq and Afghanistan. So most of these white boys that are out here, they know how to use them things. They know how to use them things. I'm like, y'all are, I'm like, this is retarded. Y'all are retarded. Y'all fucking around with fire. You about to fuck around and find out. You about to fuck around and find out. You know, I mean, these comments, these comments underneath the Adam, uh, uh, what's this dude's name? The ad, what did I say his name was? Adam Twart, Tart, uh, Taggart, Adam Taggart. These comments are horrendous. <sighs> Look at this comment. As a man supporting his family while barely able to feed myself on these crappy wages, I'm nearly at my breaking point, right? You, you know, freaking your eyebrows should raise when a white man says, I'm nearly at my breaking point. We know what that means. I'm nearly at my breaking point. 
of just trying to leave this country or giving up trying anymore. I'm tired of working and not able to afford to eat. What is this nightmare? Is this the American dream? At age 29, I am suffering with no family besides the one I made myself, and now I can barely feed them. I am reliant on the government who hates me. I can't stand this country anymore. You see, when you got white men, white men, when you got white men talking like that, see, 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 you done, you done fucked up. You done fucked up. I hope you're hearing me. You done fucked up. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, ah, man, see, I, I already seen this coming. You know me, I'm nigga Domus. I already seen this coming. What is this? What does this comment say? I think the trickle down is that dating market is so bad that when men lose interest, ability to date women and start families, they by default don't find work worthwhile. You damn right they don't. You know, but those two things interplay because if the men were more economically viable, right, if it was like it was, I'd say, I don't know, maybe like. <sighs> early 2000s, late 90s, you know, I mean, I remember those days. I remember, you know, having a ball, you know, and and going out and and you know, yeah, you spent some money, but you you weren't you weren't killing yourself. You weren't sitting there saying, "Hey, you know, I don't have a future." Like, "Hey, like no, nah, like this, no, nah, this like people can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel." You know, they're like, so I'm never going to own a house. I'm never going to have any any of these things that women expect me to have. So marriage is off the table. Children are off the table. So I'm just out here existing. I'm like, I'm like, OK. I'm like, again, you got a critical mass at this point of young men who are going through it, uh, who are going through it. You know, job is demeaning. Wait, job is a demeaning term. A man who works all day has no time to make money. J.D. Rockefeller, the richest, most powerful people in the world, do next to nothing in terms of real labor. We live in a ne uh, nepo, what is this, nepotocracy, unless there is a massive reckoning that forces the top 0.01% to do actual work again. What incentive does everyone else ruled by... Uh, such a cohort have to give half their life over to corps that uh, deem everyone replaceable. Uh, the answer is zero. And see, this goes back to remember when Tim Gurner, remember the Australian that was like, we need more pain in the economy. You know, we have to remind these people, of, you know, who we are, the ruling class. And, you know, they're just the peasants. See, again, like I said before, white people's default society structure is feudalism that's what it is and capitalism is just a glorified sophisticated uh a, a freaking uh a, a, you know you know uh a, a complex nebulous uh a form of feudalism you know, one that you can't see right that's what it is <clears throat> loneliness and disconnection among the young is the most concerning and disappointing no society can flourish under those conditions precisely at the end of the day it's just gonna come down to the money i know the religious people don't want to believe that they're like no christ is king bring jesus back you know they want to talk all this no no this is this the rapture is about to happen soon all this bullshit all this bullshit all this could be fixed you want to make heaven on earth you can make heaven on earth you just got and, and, and I, like i said if i was if i was if i was if i had the power of god and I wanted to make Earth the most perfect place on Earth. I could make heaven on Earth easily. All I would do is make uh, everybody aware of resurrection, that they could come back and be any race or any gender uh, when, when after they die. There is no heaven. All of you will be resurrected as another human being. And they'd be like, wait a minute. So you mean I could come back as that little starving African kid? Yup, you can come back as that starving. You mean I could come back on some slim dog millionaires, you know, uh, rummaging through trash in, in Mumbai? Yup. Oh, shit. Yeah, they would clean that shit up real quick. 
They would they would make sure that shit real quick. That way, when they come back, they come back to in a, in a, they, they 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 get birthed into a white room. You know what I mean? The shit looks like uh uh damn uh equalizers. I don't know if you ever saw the movie with equalizers with Tay Diggs. Very very futuristic, Elon Musk type of future and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I could make that happen if you know I had the power of God. I I would just eliminate heaven. Because people who think that they're going to heaven, they're like, oh, yeah, I, I fucked everybody over in my life and now I get to go to heaven. It's a really warped, you know, concept. But they think that they're going to a different place so they can leave the conditions on Earth as shitty as they possibly, you know, you know, can. They don't care. They're like, I got I got mine. And they roll the fuck out. Uh, I don't have kids. What is this? I don't have kids. and you. I don't have kids and you live with family. You can do odd freelance jobs and have a fairly nice life that's bullshit oh okay so so that's what it is now we're, we're freelancing it to death <sighs> uh Mer- okay have you tried applying for a job lately miracle your your resume gets through a layer of hr idiots and keyword filters most of the time you don't even get an email back. Now, see the whole the whole internet AI filters, all that sh- all that is a problem. All that is a problem. I wish it was back in the day where you know you walk into a job and you have your resume printed out. Can I speak to the manager? And you go and you talk to that person. No, 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 no. no. That's not what it is now. Now shit just disappears into the void and whatnot. I knew things were bad when because I still got like like websites that I had my resume floating around on and and like I remember there was this transition that happened like right before the pandemic and I just left the shit up there but what I noticed is I used to get phone calls from Brad Chad Kelly and Stacy right and if you notice those are very white names right but then after the pandemic, I started getting phone calls from Rajesh, Shopa, you know, Hardeep, Jasmeet. You know, I started getting phone calls from all these Indians from Canada. You know what I mean? I used to get I I used to get hit up by like I don't know, companies like Aerotech and and other like science-based companies and whatnot. Not anymore. No, 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 no. It's all Indians and it see this is like like indeed like indeed just fired a whole bunch of people like when you fire when you fire a whole bunch of people like that do the recruiting and do the that's how you know shit is fucked up that's how you know when you fire the people when you how do I say when you fire the people that do the hiring and then you replace them with cheaper people that are from you know, India and other places. And that's what's going to happen to all the IT stuff, right? I mean, there is the English barrier, but India speaks English. That's what I was trying to, I was, I was trying to tell people that in the Caribbean. I was like, if the Indians can do it and they speak English and you speak English, yes, with accents, but you speak English. And I'm like, you don't have any material, raw resources on these islands with the exception of like Haiti. Jamaica's got bauxite, which is what's used to make aluminum foil and shit like that. But I'm saying you know, you should be getting the young uh, uh, Caribbean Islanders into tech because they can do it. The Indians can do it. They can do it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. That was just my suggestion. This country is doomed as a younger person. Let me tell you, America is America will go the way of Rome. Uh, Thanks for yeah, see, they're pushing back on a lot of this stuff that they're saying. Was this the joke? Is this the joke? How out of touch can you be? You can't save to get ahead when you have hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loans debt and the price of everything just keeps going up. Employers have no loyalty to anyone but shareholders, so people are being laid off by the thousands when they are when they were barely getting by to begin with and you can apply to for hundreds of jobs and get 15 interviews and maybe eight callbacks for any job 
that might be able to pay your mortgage and and barely anything else. Yeah, you can't do anything else. He's talking about being house poor. Uh, yeah, sounds like a solid modern path of destruction. I mean, the nihilism here is just crazy. Uh, he looks like a priest. That's funny. Did I not just say that at the very beginning? He does look like a priest because he zippers his he zips his shirt all the way up to the top. Th- these these guys they don't give me any fucking hope because I've seen them talk. I mean, they're just so discon. All these people, all these people with 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 a head full of gray. They're so disconnected. I don't think I've talked to anybody over the age of 60 that fucking gets it. They don't fucking get it. They, 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 it's a completely different world. I mean, this even goes back to the whole thing with the whole problem with how they, they, they have a problem with being, you know, they can't linear track how young people make money. Meaning like people who are using AI, people who are making money online, social media, uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you know, and then you see the people that get really successful and they're making, you know, lots of money. I mean, you know, tens of thousand dollars a month, right? I mean, I mean, I don't think anybody would complain if they're making thirty thousand dollars a month. You'll never get thirty thousand dollars a month from a job, right? But you know, if you brand yourself out, right, and everybody's trying to be like this, their own personal brand, I'm saying. See, they can't follow that. They're like, well, how are you making that much money? Why are you going to... I remember when Method Man was in the barbershop. I don't know what, what show that is on, on, on YouTube, but the barbershop talk where they sit in the barbershop in New York. And I remember Method Man was like, how are these young niggas getting all this money? How are they getting this money? Right? Because he didn't understand the game at the time, you know, cause he only understood record labels and, you know, they, you know, front you the money in and you got to pay them back and you got to sell so many records, right? All that shit that most of the black, you know, uh, entertainers and, um, and artists, you know, got caught up with, you know, Michael Jackson, you know, Prince, they got caught up in that bullshit. But, but, but the, the young generation, nah, like soldier boy, you know, like all the stuff that he with his phone and, you know, the, the, just all the goofy things that he tries to do to make money. I commend him, you know, for doing that type of stuff. I don't think anybody should knock that. But I'm saying you can do that, but that's that is not a viable option for most people. And if you want to have the Wonder Years type of neighborhoods that, you know, in many regards, black people were excluded from. But there were, you know, a rise of a black middle class and places like Compton, places like um, uh, Detroit. You know, it's crazy. I was watching some video on t- on uh, it was Instagram. They had a house in Compton and the house was they wanted six hundred and thirty three thousand dollars for this house. And it was like. Maybe a maybe a, a two bedroom, three bedroom max, single single story home. You know what the houses look like out there in Cali, like you know in, in Compton. You know like that whole you know boys in the hood type of houses. What do you call them houses? Ranchers, bungalows. What do you call them type of houses? You know, and they wanted six hundred thousand dollars. You know, forty thousand. That's another thing that needs to happen. Getting the 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 private equity investors out of the housing market that that needs to be banned you know that needs to be completely booted out but the you know these things are band-aids at the end of the day if you have a society that doesn't want to pay people right and i understand how capitalism works capitalism works by them making money and whatnot but there there's a there's a more like nefarious aspect to this where it's like they don't everything is about cutting cost and catering to shareholders and it, it and it gets to a point where again people aren't making money, so therefore they're not spending money, and then eventually the company is going to get to a point where nobody's buying their products. Personally, I think what people should do, what young people should do, is a a kind of moving boycott. Like you just pick a company, you pick a company that that's been doing like just shit you don't like. Like I like I forget what the what the app is, but there's an app that where where people anonymously can say whether the company is toxic or not, like whether certain things in the company are toxic. I think that people should just just move around and just pick companies to boycott until the companies come together, 
have a sit down, have a conversation and like, hey, we got to change, you know, what we're doing. Because at this point, I mean, they're 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 undermining society. I mean, and every there's a whole bunch of things that need to change. Reunions need to be reinstated, right? Tariffs on imported goods, you know, all these sorts of protectionist things for American workers. But I don't know. They don't. Nobody seems to. You know, that doesn't seem to be. Um, it doesn't seem. It doesn't seem to be a sense of urgency around that. And I'm like, okay, well, then get ready for the rise in crime, the rise in militias, the rise in domestic terrorism, the rise in mass shootings, the rise in uh, 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 self-deletions, the rise in substance abuse, uh, the rise in single mothered homes. Uh, what else? What else is going to what else is going to rise? Right generalized crime i think i said that carjackings home invasions you know all that sort of stuff i mean get ready for it get ready for it you know i mean it's just there's no there is no stability that's going to come out of this shit there's no planning there's no future the people who do have kids they don't have the ability to even check their kids how are you going to check your kid and you're broke how, how is your how is your son going to listen to you and you can't even keep the lights on? How does that work? You know what I mean? You got the boomers running around. Where are the parents? Where are the parents? The parents, even if the parents were there, they couldn't. They can't do shit because they broke. And the kids know that they broke. The kids are like questioning like, why the fuck did you bring me here? Right? Because... Just if the if, if if the if the parent can't get anything going, what makes the parent think that the kid can get anything going? And what makes the parent think that the kid is going to respect them when the kid, you know, has to go out there and get it himself? And that's another thing that goes on, even with the boomers that have that even currently have kids that are living with them in their own homes. The crazy thing is, is that there are a untold number of parents out here. Parents of both millennials and zillennials that they want to keep a healthy gap between them and their own kid because that's where they derive their authority. That's where they derive the respect that they get from their child. They don't want to have to deal with a child that's like, hey, I don't really need your money. I don't need to live underneath your roof. I don't need any of these things. I can go out there and get it on my own. I don't have to listen to what you what you know what you want or what you say because I'm a grown ass man. I'm a grown ass adult. There's a lot of parents that don't want to have to deal with that. You know, I was talking to, to Cap about you know, like one of his friends that I mean the guy just didn't get it. He didn't get it in terms of like getting on. He didn't want to go and work in the factory and whatnot. And uh, you know, I was asking a question. I was you know because basically his dad one day was like, you know, well, because they had one car between him and his sister and this, and he was going to go somewhere and his sister had to be somewhere. She was in school and he was like, well, she's going to use the car so you can't go. And his father said something to him like, why don't you go get a job at the chicken shack? And that fucked his head up. He was like, damn. He's like, that's what you think of me? Like getting a job at the chicken shack and cat was on his ass. Like, what did you, what did you think that they were going to say? What do you think that they, they, they just see you just operating, you know, not functioning, not doing, you know, what you need to do, right? And and that they're going to have any sort of respect for you, which is a solid point. But by the same token, I asked Cap, I was like, why didn't his dad, who was working in GM, why didn't his dad put in a referral for him? Why didn't his dad put him on? And he was like, you know what? I don't know why his dad didn't put him on. To sit there, you work at GM, you know how they work, they got referrals, right? All you got to do is get your son a referral. It'd be one thing if he, if your son rejected the referral that you got him and you put it in front of him, but no, no, didn't get the referral, didn't, didn't give him the referral, but then suggested his son work at the chicken shack. Like, who does that? Who does that? Somebody who wants to maintain a healthy financial gap over their children so that they can maintain this position of respect and authority which which boomers love by the way we all know they love that right 
And, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of problems just with even just interacting with boomers because they still operate on the respect your elders just because type of shit. Not realizing that, again, the millennials and the zillennials currently have more information than they do because all the information is available. We look it up. It's on our phones. Then on top of that, we got AI. You know, what I mean, the information we got information at our fingertips, which is why it should be much easier and more tact was what I'm looking for tactic tactical tactful in terms of circumventing the boomers and some of the shit that they're doing kind of like what you see with the guys you know with the whole you know the meme stocks and and Robin Hood and and GameStop and all that stuff right you know um you know people trying to short stocks and whatnot and then you have these people that are using social media and using you know, messengers to say, this is what all of us are going to do because we're going to, you know, push back on these people, you know, on Wall Street. So I'm saying the capability is there, but what you're looking at is two things, class warfare and generational warfare. It's not about red or blue when it comes to young people. It's about, it's about old people and it's about people with money. That is who we're up against, plain and simple. You know, so, um, you know, I personally, I think, you know, black people are more aware of what's going on because of our position, you know, historically in this country and our current position in this country. White men got a lot of soul searching to do because you got a lot of white men that still want to maintain white supremacy. You got a white lot of white men that are confused focused in the wrong areas you know you know they want to be vikings they want to be white nationalists right they think that oh if we get rid of all the minorities that suddenly these same people who don't want to pay you now are suddenly going to be like oh you got us (laughs) finally well let us open up our wallets bullshit they ain't gonna pay you they don't want to pay you what 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 you're experiencing right now is the Gilded Age 2.0. Go back and do some research on the Gilded Age, okay? You have to understand that white people are extremely hostile to white people. And, you know, maybe this goes back to the Iceman inheritance. I, I don't know. But white people are extremely economically hostile against other white people. They don't, this whole idea that you all are one big white family like no like you don't you haven't existed like that the native american largely existed like that the african largely existed like that but you all y'all haven't done that that's why you y'all do weird shit and you go out there and like the beatles you want to go to india and you want to you know go to the mountaintop i i i i want the knife you know y'all be trying to always run around trying to find these other external forces of spirituality you know that i guess is lacking you know within within your own social group but there seems to be this idea that it's us versus them it's all white people are one big happy family capitalists somehow don't exist the white oligarchy doesn't exist and that the white oligarchy wants what's in the best interest of the collective of white people that is simply not true it's not true. Where is it? Show me the evidence. If I'm wrong, show me the evidence. And I know what y'all like to do. You like to blame the Jews. Oh, they're the, they're the ones masterminding all of this. You know, bullshit. Bullshit. When it comes to the people that are in positions of power, that, that got, you know, Anglo-Saxon names like a motherfucker all over the place, you all uh, uh, just simply ignore all the things that they do to undermine you. And you're more and, and you allow them to distract you with race and you allow them to distract. Oh, look at the black guy. Look, 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 look at Michael Brown. You know, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, look at look at Tamir Rice. You know, look at Philando Castile. You know, uh, these black people, they're not complying. You know, they get you all hyped up on look at George Floyd. Right. They get you all hyped up on that. And then you go, you feel like you got to go out there and you got to defend whiteness. And you're so worried about, you know, black people being mad at white supremacy that you completely ignore the, 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 the freaking class supremacy within your own group. 
You you seem to forget about that. That's the bigger enemy, right? These 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 billionaires and I mean they're literally. I mean what you tell me you tell me what's worse, one black guy going into a white suburb to carjack somebody and steal their car and drive off and it hits Fox News and you guys go crazy in the comments sections the usual suspects you know y'all y'all over there foaming in the mouth or these you know wealthy oligarchy type of white people that literally steal your livelihood they make it so that you can't put food on the table they make it so that you can't purchase a home they make it so that you can't date and be in relationships they make it so that you can't retire right the black guy he only wanted your wallet and your keys okay you know he took your car right that's pretty bad but it's not where is it but but the black guy is not literally taking away your existence I mean, obviously, if he robs you and shoots you, and then, yeah, he took away your existence, that would be worse. But I'm saying, you know, it's like the boiling frog, you know, scenario. All of you are being boiled right now, but you're more concerned about, I, I don't know, uh, you know, some some black teens uh, uh, being rowdy or some shit like that. You know, screaming, screaming because they're having a street takeover. Where are the parents? You know, despite however many white people are out there. But you say nothing about, you know, the fact, all, all the other things, all the way that you, all the ways in which you get robbed every day. All, all the ways that they just, you know, oh, well, let's just increase the subscription fees on them. Right? It, it, that's robbery. But y'all ain't mad about that. Y'all y'all think that's a part of the system. And then you have this whole aspect where you don't think, you can't think out of the box so much so that you can't think of any other system existing other than capitalism. That's how that's how much you've been raised on capitalism as a belief system. Again, like I said, go look at how go look at how the CIA has gone into these foreign countries to disrupt the very type of policies that we would be asking for right now, right? Things like universal health care, things like free education, right? Things like affordable housing, you know, things that looked very socialist, right? The very things that people are like, hey, this shit is like, in other words, I think people like capitalism because capitalism gives them the hope that maybe if they work hard enough, they can be in that like 1% if they work hard enough. That they could propel themselves there. But you got to remember that within capitalism, those that are already in the wealthy positions, they're going to come together and organize to make sure that you stay where you are and that they get to stay where they are. Right. The, the letting people through the cracks. Right. Those are the exceptional people. But they're not the norm. But they make you think that they're the norm. They make you think that it's possible. But it's, it's really not. And so they get you to be so anti any other system. I'm not even saying it has to be socialism. I'm saying they're so anti any other way of operating. And they get you locked into this belief system that you end up facilitating your own enslavement. You end up facilitating your own bondage and you don't see it. And then you get blinded by like you have that going on and then you get blinded by all the distractions and all the noise and shit, all the racial shit, right? All the white guilt and 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 because black people, you know, they they're, they're upset because they've been most affected by all of this. White people are just beginning to be affected. And and, and white people, I mean, y'all can't handle five seconds of, of of discomfort and delayed gratification. You can't handle it. You can you cannot handle it. The, welcome to the experience and the existence of being black in America and what black people have collectively gone through in this country for centuries. What you're feeling now, what I'm reading in these comments, this is what black people go through. And 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 y'all can't handle it. You couldn't be black for five seconds, but y'all to. You know, the superior race, the stronger race. But I see the comments, right? See, again, it's like it's like that that whole, you know, 
ain't no fun when the rabbit has the gun, right? Right? Ain't no fun when 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 you're not in the position that you thought you were in. Right? I'm willing to to to, to form Voltron, you know, with whoever who recognizes how fucked up this 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 whole system is. But a lot of y'all, y'all gotta get over all y'all bullshit. Like the shit that happened recently with this the dad, the white dad jumped up on the stage pushing the black superintendent out of the way because he doesn't want his daughter shaking the hands of a black man. Like, the fuck? And you got all this shit going on where you can't afford X, Y, and Z? And you worried about a black man shaking hands with your daughter? That's the, that's, that's the fucking superintendent. Like, it's shit like that. It's shit like that. You know, but... um. I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for 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 the for the, the, the complaining and the bitching to stop. Cause I'm pretty confident about white men taking action. Cause they're white men. And they have massive amounts of entitlement. You know, they, they, they still believe in the in the in the American dream. They still they still cling on to that. You know, they still believe it is their country and that they have to you know, take it back. A lot of y'all think I have people want me to make videos about Donald Trump. Donald Trump ain't gonna help this shit. You know that there, there's a, there's the thing is is that Project 2025. There's things in there that it you know you know he talks about you know uh, wages that support a family. Doesn't really go into a whole bunch of detail. There's other stuff in there that's just a power grab for Republicans. You know, trying to you know, maintain their position in the long run. You, you know, you still got to remember that the Republic, the Republicans are not the small, like they're the small government for the, for the wealthy people. You know, they just, they want the regulations out of way so that they can make more money. But again, like, you know, what do you need regulations for? Like the shit we're talking about, there should be regulations for preventing private equity from purchasing, you know, uh, family homes. There should be regulations you know, preventing uh, companies from posting ghost jobs, right? Right, that, like, anytime I say regulation, that is a part of, quote, unquote, big government saying you can't do this. The, the, the idea that you can have f- complete free markets and absolutely no protection for, for, for working people, all you're going to get with is, or all you're going to end up with is people that are going to abuse power, Right. Right. What do they say? You know, uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So removing, quote unquote, government in every aspect, in every facet, um, you know, that's not going to work to your benefit. You know, the other thing that needs to happen is you got to take money out of politics because the very people that you're trying to create laws against or the very entities like the corporations and how they function and how they operate and interact with employees, um, they're throwing their money at the politicians to not pass the bill. So while you're like, oh, I voted for you, and if you don't, we're not going to vote for you unless you really hold them to that shit. Unless it's like, oh, um, uh, Senator, whatever. Did you do what we said? No. Okay. You're right. You're the fuck out of there. We're getting you out of there and you get them out of there. Like literally the next cycle. If, 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 if there's not that type of response, you know, they're going to listen to the money because at the end of the day, they bet on the fact that you're not that organized. This is the whole thing of why, you know, people are like, Oh, well, if people want to have gun control, why can't they have gun control? And because gun owners are a minority of this country, how does the NRA and how do they have such a grip lock on the politicians? Because they're freaking one issue voters and they will pull up. It comes down to who's going to pull up. They go to the polls. They, 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 they will vote. They will vote a person out. They will vote against them. They're like, wait, you voted for gun control? Get him the fuck out of here. Like, that's how they function. You know, I found that out when I became a gun owner. Like, they, the, them, them white men that love their Second Amendment, they do not fuck around. But when it comes to, uh, you know, young people, you know, there's this, it's, it's, right now, it's completely disorganized. 
completely disorganized. You got people running around with Biden t-shirts. You got people running around with Trump t-shirts and all this other. That's not going to fix young people's problems. That's not going to fix it. Again, you, you got to talk local level. You got to talk, you know, the, the House and the Senate. You got to be aggressive as fuck, you know, when it comes to this shit. Because corporations, I mean, they, you got to, they've been, they've been playing long ball. None of this stuff, none of this stuff happened overnight. All that, you know, the union busting, the free trade agreements, right? The, the, um, the, uh, you know, the elimination, yeah, that would be free trade agreements, you know, uh, getting people off of pensions and then telling them, oh, take your own money and gamble it in the 401k, which you end up having to pay taxes on when you take the money out. Okay? It's taxes delayed. It's not taxes uh, go away and they don't exist. You know, or taxes deferred. It's not taxes eliminated. People thinking, oh, I go out and get my 401k and I put my money there. And, and when you go to take your money out, not only do you have fees to pay, you also have to pay taxes on that money. The taxes were simply delayed. You see, pensions, they had to match, you know, the money that you got and it was guaranteed and, and then you could transfer it over to your spouse. Totally different structure. And again, you know, who got rid of that? The boomers. They got rid of that shit. You know, shit is, the, the shit, I mean, the shit is just, is, is, is fucking crazy. I'd say the boomers and the silent generation got rid of that shit. They allowed it to happen. They watched it happen and they did nothing and they didn't think about future generations and you got told a whole bunch of hocus pocus about free markets and and let capitalism and trickle down economics and they bought into it and now they're with a they're in a situation where either a their kids are living with them or b they have they they lost the the, the possibility of having grandchildren I mean, what is the I mean, what is the whole point of doing all, all of this? What is the whole point of having a family and starting kids and all the shit that the boomers did in the fucking 80s? What is the point of that if at the end of the day it's going to equate to a genetic dead end because, you know, your the two sons that you have, you know, aren't producing any kids. Right. Or even or even the way the negative impact of even if you have a daughter and then she becomes a single mom. Right. And then the child that that she's going to have, that child is going to grow up in chances are poverty or grow up with some sort of dysfunction. Like you're fucking up your whole bloodline. You're fucking up your whole bloodline because of your greed. It, it just, it, like I said, white people, y'all on some other shit. Y'all on some other shit. You know, I'm looking at y'all sideways. Again, this is your system. You set it up. You remind us of it all the time. Every chance that you get, right? Y'all, y'all running around. Yes, and us white people, we have superior high IQs, and you create a system that literally is not sustainable and cannibalizes your own children. That's what you call high IQ. That that's high IQ. That's high IQ. That's what you call high IQ fucking retarded you know and then and then I, i'm saying you know what's so crazy like like the way that white people right we know white people lie to us right they tell us some bullshit it's not true right and some black people buy into it others don't the ones that don't are always called militant but it's amazing watching how white people lie to each other to get over on each other and I'm like, I'm sitting there like, aren't y'all supposed to be a team, right? And then, like, the fact that it goes past the critical mass. Like, I understand, like, on an individual basis, right? There's still competition. The world is competition. Life is a competition. White men are going to, you know, compete with each other here and there and whatnot. But when you get, when it's, like, so big, when you're talking about an entire system, an economic, financial system right you know corporations banking all how all those things intertwined and 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 they are lying to themselves to the point that they let it they let it affect a critical mass like that's mind-blowing to me 
It's mind blowing to me. I mean, a, I mean, a bunch of thieves and crooks and and liars and stealers, and then got the audacity to to to, to put Jesus in their mouth. <laughs> And I don't even subscribe to Christianity and Jesus, but I'm just saying, you know, based on the Bible and what Jesus is supposedly stand for, for these people to actually go up there, get on the podium or whatever, and start talking about Jesus. And 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 you and you've set up a system that cannibalizes your own your own children. You know, uh, America is a Christian nation, even though it's not, but let's go with the idea that it's a christian nation i'm like where is all this christianity it's not like you're operating it's not like it's not like america is operating on christian capitalism is if there's even such a thing i just made that term up it, are we operating on christian capitalism are corporations do they operate on christian capitalism right do they make sure that their workers are taken care of because that would be the christian thing to do right right but see, none. Nah, that's what. That's why I say Christianity is bullshit. Because Christianity is for the workers. Christianity is not for the corporations. It's not for the institutions. It's not for the government. It's not for the politics. It's literally a bunch of sweet talk, like 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 a pimp trying to get you know get uh into a, a bitch's panties by whispering sweet nothings into her ear to get her to believe whatever it is that they want her to believe. And that's how you all get duped by Christianity. I know y'all want to believe. I know you love the sweet twinkle of white Jesus and you want to have Christ in your bosom. I know, I know, brother, I know. But it's a bunch of bullshit. For further evidence, I direct you to look at the world around you. It's bullshit. It's used to get you to comply and to conform. And despite all of the oxygen that they, you know, you know, you know, freaking suck out of the room, they're still they're still looking at you going, breathe, brother, breathe, gas, breathe, inhale. And there's no air to inhale. You know, and then if you suffocate, then they'll be like, well, I mean, you didn't breathe, but you took all the air out of the room. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't breathe. That, that was on you. Right? That that that's that's the whole dupe of it. Now, I mean, I don't have to sit here and convince the Christians that still want to subscribe to Christianity because again, if you go online and you Google it, Christianity has been on a sharp decline, especially with younger generations. Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why the younger generations are non-believers. Because everything that they see in this world is either lie or a fucking corruption. And the, and the very people who brought them into this world are the main people perpetuating it. That's the crazy part. But yet, again, they got the audacity to fix their mouth to, to, to utter the words about Jesus and the Lord and God and the gospel and, and the Holy Trinity and the Holy Spirit. Bullshit. Bullshit. Don't want to fucking pay anybody. And like I said, eventually it comes full circle. You know, it comes full fucking circle because eventually people ain't going to have any money to spend. I was watching a video. This YouTube guy, he talks about, he's like, they can't even sell Toyotas. He's like, the car dealerships are like, he, he just walks around these car dealerships and they got cars on top of cars on top of cars. They can't even bring in any more cars. They're telling the manufacturers, stop trying to get them to, to take the cars because they don't even have spots on their lot, you know, to for the cars. They don't even have spots on their lot. Trucks just sitting there, you know what I mean? Like, they're just, they're just trying to slash prices. I'm like, ain't nobody got no money. They don't have any money. You know, they want to tell you about, oh, the economy is so good and we got uh, jobs, the jobs increase. You know, these official jobs. And it, fucking don't come up here and tell me about some jobs. They, the job report needs to literally say how many house buying wages jobs were created. How many jobs that can support a family were created. Nobody gives a fuck about fast food wage type of jobs. Nobody cares. 
Nobody wants to hear about how two million fast food jobs were added to the economy. Nobody wants to hear that bullshit. But yet Joe Biden will go up there and be like, oh, yo, we, we, we created, we, we're, we're doing big things. Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, and it's, uh, and again, like, it's just, you know, I swear, like, this is the problem with the old people. They literally think the old tactics that they have done previously fucking work. They don't work. People have entirely too much information and they're not, and they're not getting the information from the mainstream outlets, which we already know are funded for and paid for by the fucking corporations that don't want to hire anybody. We already know that. You know what I mean? Like, like people can't go up there and see the slant. You know what I mean? It's just like, I mean, it's just like when CNN had that, 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 that general, you know, go up there, you know, talking about, and now I'm going to go fully semi-automatic. Really? Fully semi-automatic, my guy? Fully semi-automatic. I'm going to go fully semi-automatic. And then he fucking shot the gun and the gun's pushing him back. Oh my God. The, 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 the unbelievable amount of recoil coming from five, five, six. Oh my God. Oh my God. Put a, put a muzzle brake on that bitch. It's so much goddamn recoil. Fuck out of here. You know, motherfuckers over there shooting some shit like he's shooting a gun from Hell Divers too. Like the fuck out of here. You know, just, oh, you know, just, just leaning. I mean, shit, that shit is just retarded. It's retarded, but it's like, if you're going to lie to me about that, what else are you lying to me about? Oh, oh, you're lying to me about Israel. Oh, surprise, surprise. Oh, man, it's just, just, just fucking, just. again, white people, these are your people. Y'all going, y'all going to have to check y'all people, because if we do something about it, it's gonna be ah, oh, it's a race war. It's this this is race war. We can't do nothing about it, right? Y'all will jump up and say that you know you know we're you know we're the problem. It's a race war. But yeah, anyway, that's all I gotta say. That's my video. SWP out. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. Y'all need to clean house. That's all I'm saying. That's my video. SWP out.